Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Real Science Exchange, the podcast where leading scientists and industry professionals meet over a few drinks to discuss the latest ideas and trends in animal agriculture. As we close out 2021, we want to take a few minutes to look back. The Real Science Exchange was started as a way to have a more in-depth and intimate conversation with our guest speakers from the Real Science Lecture Series. We began the podcast in the fall of 2020. We tried to model the podcast after what takes place after a typical nutrition conference. You know, after a long day, we gather at the pub with our friends to cuss and discuss the new things that we heard during the conference. And that's what we're trying to recre- recreate here at the uh, Real Science Exchange. We want to create a, uh, a friendly atmosphere with friends over a few drinks and a lively uh, conversation about, well, science. Hi, I'm Scott Sorrell, one of your hosts here at the Real Science Exchange. Tonight, we welcome back several of our co-hosts who have joined us uh, throughout the year. We'll share our favorite episodes and give a quick peek into the new lineup for 2022. Before we dive, dive in, I'd like to thank all of our loyal listeners from around the world. We've been so blessed with uh, an ever-growing audience. We now have listeners from all 50 states and 62 countries. To date, we've had over 24,000 downloads, and we continue to grow our audience uh, every week. Um, Thank you all who have joined, shared the messages, and who have participated. We're busy now making some uh, fun improvements for the podcast for next year, so get ready for some new ways to interact in 2022. So now let's get uh, reacquainted with the cast of characters that's joining me here tonight. First, Dr. Clay Zimmerman. Clay, Clay, you've been here uh, many, many times, so uh, you know the drill. What's in your glass tonight? Scott, I dug into the back of the refrigerator. It's not seasonal <laughs> now, but it's still refreshing. I've got a watermelon hard cider here. Dude, that's what you had in the summertime. Look I know. Out the window. There's snow out there. I Maybe. know, <laughs> but it's it's still good. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, got all your Christmas shopping done, Clay? Got, got uh, anything for Karen yet? I, I have, actually. I did a lot of it Black Friday. So. Okay. Can you share what, what you got Karen this year? Uh, Does she listen to the podcast? A farm. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that's different. <laughs> you bought the farm. I bought. All the right. Farm. Well, I was going to say, if you if you needed a um, a gift idea, I've got one for her. You can get her a Real Science Exchange T shirt. And anybody else out there that wants uh, to buy themselves a gift or get themselves a free gift, you don't have to buy it. You can get a a, a free T shirt by going to um, by taking a, a screenshot of the Real Science Exchange, and then sending it to anh.marketing at valchem.com, along with your address and your shirt size. And you'll mm-hmm. hopefully we can get it to you before Christmas. Um, Dr. Eric, um, you're our companion animal nutritionist, and uh, next year we'll be expanding our pet-oriented podcast. We'll be seeing more of you next year. Uh, what's in your glass tonight? Well, Scott, I've got my my favorite tumbler, and as you know, it's probably it's, it is full of iced tea. Um, with this group, someone has to be in charge of bail money, so that's me. <laughs> um, I'll be able to say yes, Your Honor. I'll be responsible for them. I'll make You're sure they don't us. do it again. So uh, that that's what I'm drinking tonight is heavyweight iced tea. Awesome. Every every Christmas party needs a designated driver. Thank you for that, Eric. Uh, Dr. Elliot and Glenn Ains, you're both part of our ruminant technical team, and welcome back to Exchange. What are you guys drinking tonight? Jeff? Well, thanks, Glenn. Well, what I'm drinking is actually very relevant to possibly my favorite um, podcast this year. Um, So I'll just go ahead and share that so I can explain why I'm drinking this. It was the one on heat stress with Bob Collier and Rosemary and Lance. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's heat stress. I think that was on in the summer and it was July here in Texas. And I had tried all of the bourbons and I was ready to try something different. My wife and I were finishing up Peaky Blinders. I said, I need an Irish whiskey. Mm. And Lance, he came on and he said, my wife's from Ireland and I'm drinking Red Breast 12. It's smooth as milk. So in honor of Lance, I guess, and one of my favorite broadcasts, that's what I'm drinking. I bought a bottle of Red Breast. Oh, Irish very nice. Whiskey, and it is pretty smooth. Excellent. So, Dr. Ains. Scotty, doing a little, uh, in honor of being down here in Florida, a little rum and, and Coke. So always a refreshing drink because 
it's 85 degrees here. So, all right. Good it's deal. Summer, it's summer all year round. So. Yeah. No snow out your window. All right. Mm. Well, I got to tell you, gentlemen, I'm in a bit of a rut. Uh, you know, I've in the past have tried to have a different bourbon every every podcast. That gets expensive and not great on my liver. But uh, I'm I'm having a Basil Hayden's. Um, I had a bottle of Wild Turkey 101 for Chris or for for Thanksgiving. Uh, there are no leftovers, so I'm I'm having the basil today. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and speaking of, of, of being in a rut, what I'd like to do is ask our audience, if you've got a, a, a good bourbon or a scotch that you'd uh, like me to try and maybe even review, uh, let me know. Just uh, put it, send us an email at anh.marketing at valchem.com, and I'll be sure to buy it uh, and uh, share it with, with everybody here on the podcast at a later date. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us here at the pub tonight. The holidays are upon us, and it's time to both reflect on the past year and look forward to 2022. Clay, in the theme of reflecting, uh, which episode of The Exchange was your favorite in 2021? Scott, I think I think all of the episodes we did this year were very good. Uh, they're certainly uh, – a lot of fun recording them and and uh, very uh, very educational. But the um, probably the one I enjoyed the most this year was the one we did uh, that was related to impacting milk components, uh, where we had Tom Overton and Corwin Holtz as our guests. It was very practical. Um, where we headed with that one. And I, I, I just really enjoyed um, recording that one and taking part in that episode. It, it was, uh, it, it was, it was a lot of fun to do that one. Yeah, Clay, I would agree. That was, that was one I had down as one of my favorites just because it was practical, applicable. Um, just hearing people, you know, someone like Corin, someone in the field, really talking about what they do. That was, that was one of my favorites too. Eric, my guess is uh, yours is pretty easy. I think we only did one pet oriented uh, uh, podcast last year, looking for doing more next year. So we'll yeah. be expanding that, but um, I yeah, I, we, um, the one we did that was with uh, Kansas state and the pet food program. Uh, we had three graduate students there. Um, lots of good discussion. And uh, I've actually shared that with other students because we talked about some of the challenges of grad school, where they're headed in their career, not just their research and things. So that was probably one of my favorite. Um, as far as the, the lecture series, I really can't pick a, a favorite one. Um, and I'd encourage people to go to the website, look at those lecture series, because with K-State, we featured, featured the students doing their work. Um, very different, some processing, some nutrient delivery, um, with the, uh, team and, and Kate Shubler's program, they have done, a, a customer surveys, but also work with dilated cardiomyopathy and, and investigating some of the methyl donors importance there in both dogs and cats. And then with the dronies program, looking at, uh, some feline nutrition. So. At, you know, very, very different. So if you say, Eric, pick the best one, they're so different. I really, it's hard for me to do that. It's good information, practical information, applicable information that uh, someone could take away and start using in their, in their research programs right away. So. Yeah, that's, I would agree, Eric, that that K-State podcast was one of my favorite, uh, you know, oh, yeah. I'd like the fact, you know, that we were able to kind of uh, um, put the some very, very talented students on a pedestal. And I was blown away by the competency. Uh, the industry is in good hands. Those are those are some great students that we we're able to feature there. I, well, and I will tell the team uh, two of the two of the students in the podcast are are certainly our industry peers now. Both are. Um, have full-time jobs Gainful are employed employee. at some of the international pet food companies. Um, very, very successful. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that in, in the new year, we'll be able to do more of that and showcase more of these really talented um, technologists and scientists that are coming up. I think it'd be helpful uh, to the industry, really, uh, to see what this new talent looks like and be able to get a glimpse at, at, at who they are and their personality. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's, that I think was probably the, the, the most fun aspect of, of, the, of uh, the exchange that we had. Mm -hmm. How about you, Glenn? 
Well, I'd actually would, uh, <clears throat> I always like to learn new things that I don't have a lot of exposure to. And uh, we had that particular program on uh, the practical guide to achieving uh, net zero carbon emissions. And uh, Frank Mitlerner is, was one of the was participants in that event. He had done that uh, real science lecture uh, series uh, talk for us at one time and, and really garnered my interest in what I think is probably a really important issue for the industry as a whole, which is dealing with methane and uh, other other gases that are you know, problematic from an environmental perspective. And in a sense, there's, there's a potential legitimate threat to our industry uh, if we don't uh, you know, improve. But if you listen to, to Frank's talk, it's amazing what, what we, we could claim uh, because we, in fact, have done a remarkable job through increases in efficiency of production of dramatically reducing uh, our carbon footprint in this industry um, and, and something to be very proud of. Uh, but I thought that was a really good one. Uh, Jose Santos uh, was a participant in that. I always enjoy listening to Jose on just about any topic he happens to talk on. So. I think that was probably my favorite. I like the one that also in the swine area, looking at the international spread and talking about the international spread of African swine fever. Um, you know, that, again, learning a lot of different things. And there have been several podcasts, um, some on the how it transmitted in the animals and on the farm. We've looked at some how could uh, some of this may be transmitted in feeds and, and control it in feed. So again, and the same idea, Glenn, is I love learning new things. Um, I found that very, very interesting. And um, I thought that was a worthwhile uh, program as well. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, just like what Eric and Glenn both said, learning new things and in diverse things. I enjoyed the one about K-State in the, in the, the pet food, even though that's not my expertise. And even though I like learning those new things, the the legacy series that you started, Scott, and you had a couple of those this past year where you brought out, you know, some of the pioneers in different aspects. I think you had Rick Grummer and uh, Jesse Goff on transition cows. And we had one on fat that was kind of near and dear to my heart, too, because that's what my PhD was in. And Palmquist and Jenkins, I cited those guys all the time. But I've got to admit, when that first came out, I was thinking, oh, I want to learn new things. Why are we going back into the history books and talk about all this old stuff? I, ex I really found those captivating, though, on when, especially when they went into the mistakes they made or the troubles they were having and how they fixed it or maybe fix it by accident. So I thought those legacy series were pretty good too. Um, even though I wasn't expecting them to be, I was expecting not to like those. So I'm looking forward to the ones you put together for this next year too. Yeah. Cool. You know, one of my favorite episodes <clears throat> was uh, the one that we had with Dr. Mitlerner. So he's been mentioned here a couple times already and with Mike McCluskey. And really the thing I liked yeah. about that one, that, you know, we had two intellectual heavyweights, right, talking to us about sustainability and improving our industry. But I think the favorite part of that whole episode for me was the fact that uh, uh, Dr. McCluskey was he was in Puerto Rico at the time and he was on his patio. It was in the evening and uh, you could hear the frogs in the background. And he, he had um, uh, some sort of a rub, rum drink, right? He had a uh, a coconut that he had the, the top chopped off and some some local uh, Puerto Rican rums and, and made the drink right there for us. So I I enjoyed that. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. the we've got the recipe in, in the in the show notes of that episode. So if you've got uh, if you're interested, you can go there and look at that. But that that was my favorite. You know, kind of moving on, uh, we'll be expanding the exchange in 2022. Um, and Clay, you had mentioned the Journal Club before. Um, we started the Journal Club and the Legacy Series podcast in 2021, and we'll be expanding on those in 2022. Clay, would you kind of give us kind of an overview of what the Journal Club is and, and, and what we're going to be doing with that? Yeah, certainly, Scott. So we, we only had the opportunity to record one of those in, 
in 2021. Uh, part of that was because of the, the new Dairy NRC publication that was coming out. And of course, we did, we did a whole series on that, both, both real science lectures and real science exchanges related to that. But, um, but now that that, that publication is about to be sent out here uh, in December, um, we'll, we'll pick up more with the journal club. So um, sort of the concept behind that is really going back to, to graduate school and, and, you know, when we had journal club in, in graduate school. So, so really the, the point of that is um, uh, Dr. Bill Weiss is, is really leading that effort from a, um, from a guest standpoint. So Dr. Weiss will, he will pick one or two relevant uh, journal articles and uh, we'll also invite another guest on either, either an author of one of those articles or someone that's a, um, a, an expert in that topic area. So we'll pick, uh, he'll, he'll pick one or two articles and we'll get into an in-depth discussion about, about two, uh, one to two journal articles in each episode. And, uh, we've only done one so far, but that, that was quite a bit of fun uh, doing that and uh, really took me back to my uh, to my college days uh, being able to do that. Very well. Thanks for that overview, Clay. Uh, Jeff, you had mentioned the um, Legacy Series earlier, and those were some of your favorite. Can you kind of give us uh, kind of an overview of what the Legacy Series is and what we might be able to expect going forward next year? Yeah, certainly. Um, like I said, I you know, the first ones I heard, I wasn't even really sure what to expect and was it just going to be history or what. But, um, you know, what we did, we brought in pioneers in a, in a specific field. For example, on the on the fat and lipid side, uh, digestibilities, we brought in Don Palmquist and Tom Jenkins. Um, but then we brought in alongside them, Kevin Harvatine, to kind of be that younger person that's carrying that torch now to some degree. And they, they really just talked about um, what they did and their thought process and what they thought the next step would be and some of the struggles. So it's, you know, when they say, you know, we learn a lot from history about where we're going in the future, I, I think that that was part of it. It's, you know, it's why we're, we're why we're where we are today. Um, and I know we've been thinking about some others for uh, this upcoming year. I don't know how many of those episodes you're going to want to have total, um, but I know we've got several we're thinking about. And maybe I'd like to even ask this group, um, maybe who, who would they put at the top of a list to have as a couple of pioneers on a specific topic? Um, and Eric, I, I know... You know, in the pet food, too, there's probably some people out there that's been doing this for a while. So um, even, you know, you've got somebody there, too. It'd be interesting to see where that industry's come from. Yeah, there's a, there's a number, especially when you're looking at companion animals, because it's not only nutrient delivery, but there's also a very, very uh, unique um, processing component. So when you start thinking about extrusion processing, nutrient stability, finished product stability, and then if you get into the retort processing as well, is very, very unique. So there are some nutritionists that I would think of, um, probably one uh, who I consider a good friend and a mentor is Dr. George Fahey. Um, he was a professor in, at the University of Illinois, professor emeritus. Um, he and his students at that time with the ileo cannulated dogs did a tremendous amount of work in moderately fermentable fibers. And I considered the fiber matrix of a diet kind of the foundation for a healthy microbiome. So we talk about the digestive system, the microbiome of the, of the digestive system. Um, he's also worked with a lot of prebiotic fibers in that area. So there are a number of folks in proteins, fat utilization, uh, performance research, uh, certainly Arlie Reynolds and Greg Reinhardt and others were at the forefront of some of the performance dog research. Um, Dr. Mike Hayek was at the forefront of some of the senior animal research as well. 
So <laughs> there's a long list that we could put together that I think could be very good. I'm kind of excited about this legacy series because I think in order to be a strong industry technologist, you have to be almost a forever student of learning, yep. but you have to know your history. So this yep. legacy sister series could actually be an asset for new team members that are joining your company, um, students that could, you know, looking for auxiliary materials as well, or professors that are looking for auxiliary materials for their program. I think this could be a tremendous asset um, yeah. in that area. Well, I would, I'd love for us to get a George Fahey on. He was one of my professors when I was at Illinois and he always right. asked the, he always asked the tough questions. So I would like to reciprocate the uh, gesture when he's. <laughs> yeah. When I think, I think we, yeah, we reach out to uh, Dr. Fahey and, and that's, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I sure. mean, there are, yeah. I mean, veterinary clinical nutrition and, and work that's been done. Um, yep. It's great. It, there's yep. a long list. Yeah. Okay. Glenn, how about you? Who do you, who do you see as a pioneer you'd like to hear from? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned the other day that uh, John Smith, who is unfortunately not with us anymore, uh, I, I like more than just as a, as a scientist, but as a, as a person, John and I spent uh, some time together doing some, you know, across the, the country tours, so to speak, and co-hosting meetings and things. And he was a great individual, but uh, he also was a, a good scientist, a great scientist that gave us a lot of learnings about facility design and, and that kind of thing. Um, I think you know, he would be one I'd love to be able to bring back and, and have in a, in a conversation along with some of the, the, the newer, younger people. And, you know, there's there's a lot of new facility designs out there which have their benefits and I'm sure have their negatives as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but yeah, John was a, a very good yeah. man, good good friend. Yeah. Great pioneer. Yeah. Yeah. Clay, you got anybody on top of your head you're thinking of well i think i i think you know from an extension nutritionist standpoint uh you know there have been a lot a lot of retirements uh in the last few years so you know i think of mike mike hutchins who was uh uh i actually tried to model myself after when i got into the industry certainly from a speaking standpoint uh larry chase uh you know he's retired in the last few years uh, Randy Shaver. So, you know, there are a lot, a lot of extension dairy nutritionists that, uh, that uh, have retired the last few years that I, I, I think would, would bring a lot uh, to a series like this. Yeah. So I have, I have to ask Clay. So do you think you were successful in modeling yourself after Mike's uh, presentation skill, demeanor, however you want to say? Uh, I would not say that I'm there, but I, uh, but I know, but, I know very few can people always that aim. Are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only one mic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> For sure. You know, those are some great uh, suggestions guys. And I'm sure we're going to put the many of those on the short list. You know, I'd also reach out to our listeners. If you've got someone that uh, you would like to recommend, please reach out to us at uh, anh.marketing at balkim.com. Um, in addition to our legacy series and the journal club series, one uh, addition next year that we're going to have for the Real Science Exchange is that we're, you know, we've always been a virtual pub, right? Well, we're going to move to some live pub events. And so what the plan is, is at nutrition conferences, we will stage a happy hour and then we will have, we'll record a, a podcast there with some of the speakers from the nutrition conference. So we're going to give that a try, see how that works out. It'll be a great opportunity to, to meet some of you guys in person. And so, you know, if you're a fan of the Real Science Exchange, I, I, I encourage you to come up and say, hey, and, and let's have a bourbon or a hard cider together and, and uh, have, a, have a good conversation. So anyway, gentlemen, that's going to get us close to wrapping up yeah it's uh they called last call and so what i'd like to ask each of you is is kind of can you share something that um you know that that you're you feel blessed about from 2021 or what you're looking forward to in uh, 2022 and glenn why don't we start with you that would be just fine scott um well one of the things that i'm uh, looking forward to and 2022 is the uh, Nebraska Cornhuskers 
uh, finally coming back to, to a winning season. I know that may be a futile hope, but uh, hey, we lost every game this year by uh, less than a touchdown. So <laughs> there's hope for us yet, Scott. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, to be a little bit sort of self-serving, I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing the, the outcome of some of the research that we have started uh, in the last year or so that uh, reassure. Um, I, I find choline to be an incredibly interesting molecule, and we keep learning learning more and more about it. And uh, we've got some interesting things that I think we're going to probably get to report, hopefully, Clay, in, uh, in the 2022. And so I'm looking forward to that uh, a great deal, actually. I think that's a good segue over to Clay then. So 2021, obviously, it's been a it's been a challenging year, but uh, I'm I'm thankful that at least in the in recent months to be able to get back to some in person events. That's been very nice, actually. Um, I was at, you know I was able to go to the uh, ADSA Discover Conference uh, with the new uh, NRC publication. That was. That was nice to be able to do that and and see some people at at other conferences and make you know make uh, make those connections again. Uh, I am thankful that you know with our digital format here, you know we've really been able to stay uh, well connected here mm -hmm. um, through both you know our real science lectures and 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 the these real science exchange podcasts. It's been it's been great to actually be able to meet, you know, so, some new researchers uh, through this format as well. So it, uh, you know, that's, it's important to, you know, cast the net wider, meet some newer people. And, um, and, you know, as Glenn alluded to be, you know, being able to set up some new research connections as well through this. So for 2022, I'm definitely looking forward to, uh, uh, as Glenn said, we should have a lot. To, we'll have quite a few abstracts at the ADSA meetings next year. We have a lot of research uh, that's completed, a lot more in the in the works. Um, you know, we're we're always very active in that arena, and um, and from a research standpoint, you know, th th things are you know pretty much back to normal. I would say. Uh, from that standpoint, and I am really looking forward to getting back to ADSA, an ADSA meeting in person. That's been very tough trying to do that virtually the last two years. Eric? Um, yeah, 2021, um, I'm, like Clay said, I'm, I'm really thankful for these communication tools, and I'm really in awe of how well students have kind of overcame and adapted to this virtual learning. Um, it's really pushed me in a new direction of being able to communicate with them, help with them. They handle these platforms um, a lot easier than I do, um, and they've been able to help me. Uh, but they have kept their eye on the ball and really have gone through their programs. I think in the industry wide, there's going to be a lot of really neat information coming out. Um, so here toward the end of 2021, I was able to get back on some campuses and see what they have written up and what they have been able to finish up. And so I'm excited about that coming out in the, in the new year. So I'm really grateful for how these students, uh, my, my sons as well, have adapted um, to this environment, but nevertheless, they kept their compass heading. They kind of kept pushing forward. I'm really looking forward to 2022. Um, we had an early conversation today with our team right after the holidays. As soon as the pace car pulls off, we've got to be at top speed. Uh, I've got a place. I've already started scheduling some uh, on-site uh, meetings. So I'll be back in, uh, in the lab with some students and I'll be back in some manufacturing sites doing some pilot scale runs and processing runs and trying to make new products. So I'm I'm really excited to uh, be able to pull the pull the work gear out of the closet, get back in it, and get back on the plant floor, um, and help folks with some new technology and new innovation. Jeff, what about you, buddy? 
Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I'd say in my career, I've been blessed to be able to travel, see a lot of places, not just the United States, but the world, and meet a lot of great people. Um, you know, I hate COVID. I hate that, you know, people lost their lives. But one, I guess, blessing that came out of it for me was the amount of time that I stayed home and the time that I spent with my wife. Um, we spent significant time together, and that's that's really been great. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say for this upcoming year, um, you know, how do we integrate? Because, you know, I'm, I'm, we've been traveling a little bit more, and how are we going to integrate everything together? I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by how that's going to go. Um, and then I, when somebody asks me this, I always think many – about 16 years ago, we were going around the table – playing that game, asking the kids what they're thankful for. And my girl was four years old. And she said the obvious ones, I'm thankful for God, family, and bacon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I always think that. And I think, yeah, that's something to be thankful for, too. It's just your perspective. Yeah. So, but yeah. I appreciate you guys, too. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jeff. You know, the thing that I'm looking forward to most in 2022, honestly, is the, the Real Science Exchange, right, and making it bigger and better. I've done a lot of things in my career, and um, I, I think being the host of this, this, this podcast is probably the most fun that I've ever had, honestly. You know, where else can you uh, be able to sit down with some of the, the, the um, leading professionals in the industry and and have a few drinks and it's a blast man it's it's uh it's not hard duty so looking forward to make it bigger and better you know with the legacy series um the the journal club the live events i think they're all going to be a lot of fun so i uh, really look forward to that yeah. um you know and with that as we wrap up i want to thank you guys you know you've been a big part of the real science this past year uh your humor your candor your friendship has really helped make this podcast a success and I look to I look forward to having more fun with you guys uh, in the coming year. Scott, we would all be remiss if we didn't uh, thank you for all the hard work and effort both you and your staff have put into to making this a successful program. And and we certainly enjoy it and look forward to to doing more with you in the future. Yep. Well, thank you, Glenn. It's, yep. uh, Glenn, it's not been a lot of work for me. It's been all fun, right? <laughs> I also want to thank our loyal listeners once again uh, for joining us throughout 2021. We appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us, and hopefully you learned something along the way. Um, we're very excited about 2022 and expanding the podcast series. As a reminder, our Real Science Lecture Series continues with monthly topics for both the ruminant and our monogastric audiences, as well as a quarterly companion animal topic. Uh, to register for the upcoming events or to view past topics, visit balcan.com slash real science if you like what you heard tonight please remember to hit a, a five-star rating on your way out and don't forget to request that your real science exchange t-shirt we currently have uh, real science exchange t-shirts in 13 countries uh, just like or subscribe to the real science exchange and send us a screenshot along with your address and shirt size to anh.marketing at balcam.com i hope to see you next time here at the real science exchange where it's always happy hour and you're always among friends The Pubcast, we're leading scientists and industry for... Per, per, be, 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 be. All right, we're going to start that one again. That sounds familiar. <laughs> We've done that before, haven't we? <laughs>